In this video, we will discuss the basic functions of the Vector1 hand CPM controller. Uh, please note the position of the buttons on the device and reference the names, as the remainder of the video will be showing you the screen so you can follow along with the different functions and selections on the device. First off, we have our on-off switch, our blue select button, the green button, which is utilized for up and go, the red down button, which is utilized for down and stop. At the bottom of the device, you'll see the port for our power cord, where we can plug in and unplug the device. To start off, we want to turn the hand controller on. We'll have a battery test. That should read 140 or higher if you're plugged into the wall. If that is plugged in and it is not reading at least 140, please check to make sure that the power cord is plugged in fully into the hand controller and that the wall, let, wall outlet is not controlled by a switch or for some reason is no good. The first screen that you're going to come to is digit flexion. The maximum value on digit flexion is 340 and that's how the device will actually be sent to you. To make adjustments in digit flexion, uh, you want to hit the red or green buttons. Red will lower your value and you'll have less flexion. It'll go in two degree increments. And green, or up, will actually increase the value in two degree increments. To change your screen, you want to hit the blue select button. The next screen will be digit extension. And when you think of digit, ex digit extension, think of zero degrees as being straight if we go beyond zero degrees, we're actually going into hyperextension. The device will actually go to minus 21 degrees of hyperextension, so we actually have 21 degrees of hyperextension. Um, and if you want to have less extension, you actually want this number to be larger. So we decrease our extension by hitting the up arrow. Once you have your extension set, you can hit the select button and you have speed. The max setting on speed is nine. The lowest setting is 1. Uh, we generally set the device anywhere between 5 and 9. If you do set the device lower than that, the motor might run intermittently because the speed is so slow. So that is pretty standard between 5 and 9. Again, we adjust those values by hitting the green and red arrows. The next screen is force. Again, we want to hit the select button to cycle through. Uh, anywhere from 10% to 90%. If you're a standard setup, you're generally going to just set this at 90, and we want to set our flexion and extension parameters appropriately so the device does not reverse. If you do have a situation where a patient, um, you know, we want to make sure that the device does not apply too much force, we can set that to 10%, 20%, something like that, so the device will automatically reverse if the settings were too far in flexion or extension. At 10%, the device is actually all the way down to a half pound of force. Physical therapy time is our next screen. Zero means that the, that the device will run continuously. If we were to hit the up arrow or the green arrow and change it to one minute, the device is going to run for one minute and then it will shut off. So uh, if you have a situation where uh, we want to run the device for let's say 30 minutes to an hour and then we want the patient to get out and to do some active exercises, we can set the device for 30 minutes. The device would then shut off whenever the 30 minutes were up and the patient would know to do their exercises. Once we have our time set, I'm going to set this back at zero uh, so we run continuous. We can hit the select button again and our screen here is CPM therapy. That means continuous passive motion and that's going to be our standard setup. Uh, there are further functions in the hand controller and those will be covered in our advanced hand controller setup video. So we're going to leave that on therapy and then we're going to hit the select button to our next screen. This is CPM pause mask. And what that means is uh, that we're going to choose to pause in either flexion or extension with this screen. So if we have a patient that we're concerned on their end range of motion and flexion, but we don't want to spend a ton of time in extension, we'd want to turn just our flexion on or vice versa depending on the situation. As you see the screen now, uh, you can see there's a plus and an asterisk on the screen. The plus sign means that the value is selected and that it's turned on. The asterisk means that the value is turned on, but that it is not selected. So if I hit my green arrow, you'll see that plus sign toggles between flexion and extension. 
So it still means that they're both turned on, but I'm selecting a different value each time I hit my green button. If I hit the red button, you'll notice the plus sign changes to a minus sign, and that means now that my extension value is turned off. So uh, my flexion is turned on, extension is turned off. I'm going to hit my green arrow. You'll see now my flexion is selected and turned on. If I hit red, it's actually going to turn that off. So now uh, my pause is turned off in both flexion and extension. And if I hit my red button again, I turn flexion on. I hit my green button to select extension. Now I'm going to hit my red button, and they're both turned on again. If I hit select, the next screen is my CPM pause. Uh, generally, uh, post-operatively, we're going to not set this up for more than three to five seconds, but uh, if needed, this can pause for over four minutes. So you just want to hit the green arrow to increase the amount of time that we pause. Remember in the previous screen, we selected whether we wanted to pause in flexion or extension or both. I hit the select button. My next screen is my serial number screen. You'll notice there are a line of numbers on top and a line of numbers on the bottom. The top number is actually my serial number. The bottom number is a hidden compliance meter in the device. So if you have a patient that you're worried about compliance, you can easily take the device and write this number down, follow up with the patient and ask them to read you the serial number. And every hour they wear the device, your bottom number will go up one. So if they wear the device two hours, our device would then read 540 at the bottom. If I hit the select button one more time, I'm now at the start screen. This is the only screen that you can start the device on. So if you turn the device on and hit go immediately, the device will not run. You need to hit the select button until you get to this screen. We then hit go, and you'll notice the device begins to run. The number on the top is the value where our device is currently at, and the number on the bottom to the left is the number that we are heading towards. So 340 is our settings that we're running towards inflection, and the device will you'll see this number run all the way until it gets to 340 degrees and it reaches its goal. You'll see the percentage sign is our force. So as the device goes further, we're actually uh, going to uh, have to see that force go up because the device is pressing into itself and it hit 10%, you can see that that did reverse the device. Our setting is now going towards extension, which is 11 degrees, and you'll see the device run up into extension until it gets to 11 degrees, and then again we're going to head back into flexion. So those are the basics of how the hand controller works, um, and you'll notice one more thing if I hit the stop button, and then I'm going to hit select one time, the blue button, I'm back at the first screen, and that this machine is designed to work on a loop, so if you miss a screen, you, there's no back button. You want to continue hitting the select button until you get back to the screen that you're needing. And that is your basic functions of the hand controller. If you have any questions, feel free to call our office at 866-236-8889.